Okay, now we're going to look at how we create a class diagram from a simple example. Hopefully you'll remember that we just had this object diagram showing uh, three different objects from a Frogger game and the relationships between them. And the simple question we should ask before we make it is why, why are we doing this? Well, the problem is with that previous example, if we add more frogs, more relationships, more lanes, more cars, more objects, it rapidly just becomes untenable. The number of objects increases massively and it becomes impossible to draw all the possible relationships. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to generalize these objects into broader classes. This is a process called abstraction, which we've seen a lot of before. And then we're going to describe the system using that abstraction um, because that allows us to have as many lanes, cars, frogs, or other objects as we want. So what we're trying to do is uh, we're trying to group, uh, group objects uh, that share the same behavior and that have the same type. And then we're just going to start to describe attributes and associations and behavior of those groups that we call classes. So here's our object diagram. To convert it to a class diagram is very simple. We essentially group it down by objects and we say we've got now three classes. We've got a car class, a lane class, a frog class. Um, these three classes still have attributes and they still have associations. So you can still see that car is associated with lane and frog is associated with lane. In terms of attributes, however, notice that the direction, position, color, and speed of our car have gone from specific values to general types. So a class diagram will never have specific values attached to its attributes. What they will have are general descriptions of the types required by those attributes. And the reason that we do this is it makes it far, far simpler to implement once we get into turning it into code. Um, once again, we have to ask, what is the relationship between these classes? And so we had an association with lanes there, but now we need to get an idea of how many objects within those classes might be related to how many objects of other classes. So what we do here is simply add these numbers to each one of these associations. So let me go through what they mean. Over here on the left, we say, this is the relationship between car and lane. On the opposite end of the association is the description. So what this one down here is saying is that every car must have a lane. It can't not have a lane and it can't have more than one lane. So this is a one relationship. On the other hand, each lane might not have a car or it might have one car, as we see in this example here. And we're specifically saying that it is okay for there not to be a car in a lane, and it is okay for there to be one car in a lane, but we can never have more than one car in a lane at a time. If we wanted to improve our game, we might want to increase that upper bound there, and we could do that at this point in the design. We don't have to wait until we code it to get this out. It's actually the same relationship that we've got over here with the frog. We're saying every frog must be in a lane, it can't not have a lane, but that each lane either has a frog or doesn't have a frog. And that's really it. Uh, it is pretty simple to convert from an object to a class diagram, and in the next video we'll go through how to make a class diagram for a more complex example.